We're going to look at an application of the quick estimation method using critical lane analysis for an intersection in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. So we're going to use the peak hour data to perform the capacity analysis that we're going to do with this quick estimation method. For this intersection, the peak hour begins at 7.15 a.m. The data do include all vehicle types. And we can also see this in a table form. And from the table, we can see that the peak 15 minute period starts at 8 a.m. So from 8 a.m. to 8.15 a.m. is our peak 15 minute time period. And that's common to design for that peak 15 minute time period. And we'll see how we'll make adjustments to these data to account for various steps through the process to perform this capacity analysis. We do see that the total volume in that peak 15 minute period is 914 vehicles. So taking this table, the first thing we're going to do is multiply each of these values by four to get the hourly equivalent for this peak 15 minute volume. So we're just going to go through each of these multiplying by four. And again, we only need to focus on that peak 15 minute period. And we're trying to find that hourly equivalent of those peak 15 minute. And that's why we multiply by four. And we're also going to divide by the adjustment factors for the right and left turns. We divide by 0.85 for right turns and 0.95 for left turns. So for each of these volumes, appropriately right turns divided by 0.85, left turns by 0.95. And these will be the volumes that we get when we make those adjustments. No adjustments for the through movements, just those turning vehicles that have an impact on the performance and the capacity of that intersection. Next, we need to look at the movements and per lane volume. So we're going to take our volumes from our previous slide. This is the after we accounted for the hourly equivalents and then made adjustments for right and left turning vehicles. Next, we're going to divide by the number of lanes for the per lane volumes, and we need to group them by lanes. So we're going to start by looking at the number of lanes. And for instance, looking from the east approach, we see that there are two right turn lanes and then the left and the through share one lane. Uh, the south from the south has a one right turn lane, two through lanes and one left lane. And from the west, there's one for each that are separated. So we, we need to know those lanes and if they're shared or not in order to add volumes together if necessary. And so in this next step, we divide by the number of lanes. So the instances where there's only a single lane, no division happens. For example, US 15501 from the north had a volume of 668. There are two lanes. So we divide by the two to come up with a volume of 334. And this is a per lane volume. Another example to look at is the shared lane from the east of the through and the left. So we're going to add the 148 and the 21 to get a total volume per lane of 169 vehicles, just as some examples of particular values here. Now we need to take those traffic volumes and apply it to the likely signalization of this intersection to estimate how this is performing relative to capacity. So we're going to assume this is an eight phase signal, and this is a common assumption for this type of, of intersection where we have exclusive left turn lanes. Those are probably going to have their own phase. And so we'll see a little bit of this in action as we move through this example and look at the volumes. So we're going to start with the south and northbound lefts. And this is what this is why this process is fairly simple. All the way, after we've done that adjustments for the volumes on a per lane basis, we're now just comparing the numbers. So we're going to use the largest in each case. So 337 is clearly larger than 42. So that's going to be the critical lane, critical movement for this phase. We're going to go to the next phase, which are the north and southbound throughs and right turns. So we've got four numbers to look at. Again, we're going to choose the largest. So that's 674. That's going to be the critical movement for that phase. Moving to the other street, looking at the left turns, 223 and 169, clearly 223 is larger, so that's going to be the critical movement for that phase. 
And then finally, the throughs and rights for the last movement. 341 is larger than 112 or 66, so that'll be the critical movement for that phase. Now we're just going to sum up those volumes, and we're going to get 1,575 vehicles per hour per lane. And essentially what we're doing is for each phase, we're looking for what the critical movement is and what is the volume for that critical movement. So that's the 1,575. And a common assumption from the Highway Capacity Manual is 1,530. And so if we divide the volume by the capacity, we're slightly over one. So this intersection, these volumes show this intersection is operating at over capacity. The demand exceeds that available capacity. There is that assumption there of the capacity is 1530. So it could be that this intersection is, is operating higher than that. We can do a saturation flow study to, to try to understand that capacity a little better and see if it actually is higher than, than 1530 and it, it isn't that exact assumption. But using this quick estimation method, again, gives us in the, just a short amount of time a way to have some estimate of what the capacity and how the volume to capacity ratio is for this intersection.